SMCI. This thing is just, the train has left the station. A little bit um, just back and forth today, not a whole lot going on. So we on this guy, here's the 125 level, right? And then here is about the 135. So we sold the 135 puts for the week. And if anyone wants to share their cost basis on that, what they sold the 135 put for, type that in the chat. Okay, and then we'd snag the 125 puts for the protection. Okay, very, very standard money press. Okay, so Friday, Thursday, Wednesday, Tuesday, Monday. So here was Friday of last week, this red candle. So true to form, it was trading right around 135, 136, and we came in and sold that 135 put for the week. So anyone chiming in, Mike, on what they sold that 135 put for? 440, 450, 430, around okay. there. We'll use the average 440. Okay. So when this thing just goes bottle rocket gangbusters and makes a huge rally like this, it's not necessarily like, remember my little um, bad artwork sketch of where the money press makes money. This thing went up into the range of, you know, we probably weren't profitable this week. Is that a little frustrating? Yeah, I, I don't like that situation. You build a bullish to neutral trade, the stock runs up, you were right in a sense, and you feel like you're not making any money. Okay. And then if anyone tracked where the put was last week to this week, let me know how much your 125 put lost in value from last week to this week and we can kind of see what our net for the week is on smci because are we going to make this entire 440 right here yeah you could probably close that out for a penny today it's so far out of the money it might be tough to close it out it's one where it might make sense just to let it expire over the weekend do some sort of a tiptoe burglar type strategy you're like what in the world is that We'll see if we have some time to talk about it. Um, but anyone have that number, Mike, on how much that 125 put had dropped in value from last Friday to this Friday? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, so I'm saying $5.50, $5.60. Okay. So five-ish and a half. All right, so here's that scenario, right? Again, picture that little bad artwork image. This has moved up, I mean, almost $30, right? It's it's moved from 135 to 165, in, uh, 164 where it's at right now. It's been as high as 166, 167, something like that. So we've had a $30 move up. Okay, percentage wise, that's over 20%. Okay, 20% in a week, right? If it was at 135, 20% would be what, $17 move. So this thing is, I mean, even more than that. Someone got to throw that in the calculator for me, see what percentage that is. Um, 28%, something like that. So, this is a huge run that isn't a typical week, right? And the way I try to look at it, the perspective I try to keep is, even though it's frustrating to see a, a loss of about a dollar on the week, right? We we lost about a dollar here, dollar ten. You know, your number is going to be a little bit different. But this is one of those extreme cases, right? This is one of those stream, extreme examples where had this thing only gone up, you know, 20 bucks, we might be break even or even slightly profitable, probably more like break even, okay? If it had gone up 10 bucks, we're probably profitable. So I try to keep that perspective, 
as annoying as it is, as frustrating as it can feel, you know, as much as you want to like smash the the laptop off the the desk, it's really not that bad of a situation for such a unique week. A thirty dollar move on a hundred and thirty five dollar stock, right? That is a lot of movement, right, Mike? How many? Mike's been trading even longer than me. How often do you see a week like this on a stock? Yeah, it's, it's not very often. As far as so, when yeah, you I mean it. In a week, that's quite a bit. Right, and of course we'd love to just be like, oh man, I I should have just loaded up on call options and and had a heck of a run here. But of course we don't know that it was going to do that. We didn't know if it was going to do this. Right, and just kind of chop sideways for a week or do this and kind of go a little bit lower for the week. You just don't know, right? So the money press is built to try to take advantage of just probabilities, the odds, because the stock more likely than not, I can't believe I'm doing this, but I'm gonna recreate the artwork here. Okay, so the likelihood of a stock staying in this range, okay, if we have any big stats, you know, math gurus on the webinar today, right? Do we think it's more likely for the stock to sit in this range right here, our profit zone, than it is to pop up and go outside of it? right sound off in the chat there i'm curious if we think it's more likely to be in this range or more likely to to find that range on any given week i'm guessing i know the answer mike but is anyone surprising me more likely to stay in the profit range there you go okay all right so Wanted to drive that point home for a second, and then we can start talking about a couple different ways we can adjust it, because that's what you really care about, right? But having a little bit of that understanding is important that, you know, that just doesn't happen that often. And if you step back and look at just what it's done since the beginning of May, when this thing was trading down here around 100, right, 102, 103, this thing is covered a ton of ground right a hundred dollar stock popping up 60 bucks you know even in my head i can do that math right a, a 60 percent move in just a couple of weeks this thing has just been on fire right with ai and all that huh, the buzz and the chips and you know now this is another just little side thing but you know joys of being a homeowner the dishwasher went out and so you know we jump on costco.com and we're looking for a new dishwasher and we've heard that bosch the the brand bosch is great so we're looking at some of those and and guess what i'm seeing as i'm shopping for dishwashers that there's wi-fi connected dishwashers now you can have your wi-fi connect to your dishwasher and I could be in the second inning on coaching third base and I could start the the dishes from my phone, right? So what that made my brain think is, you know, how Mike, how would a, a Wi-Fi dishwasher tie in to SMCI? What's my point here? Well, there's probably parts in there that come from SMCI. Right, yeah. The, when you're selling, it, when you're selling product like that you know, with a company you know, like that you're going to see profit these stocks so. right i mean every you know coffee makers dishwashers now refrigerators everything is just getting more and more chips you know more and more just tech tech that's why this whole sector has been hot right so anyway huge run lately and now let's see what we got to do with it so a couple different ways we can trade this looking into next week all right so 
let's start. Let me clear off the scribbles here. Let's start with just kind of our standard adjustment. What would we normally do here? Okay, let me go try to get an option chain up so we can look at this. Give me one second because it's probably going to make me log in here. So if we were going to go build a money press into next week, and I say build because at this point with how much that's popped, we're going to have to adjust this up on both legs, right? We're going to have to adjust our protective put and our weekly. All right, so this is how, here's the, here's the option chain. Let's get into next week, okay? So if we were just coming in and we were just rolling that, so we had our, we had our 135 put that we'd sold, that's useless. It's, it, we pulled our whole max profit out of it. But we're going to be looking to roll that into next week. So typically, we just kind of look right at the money. Okay. So right at the money for next week, 162.50. Okay, our 162.50 put. And that thing's pulling in. We could easily grab 550 for that. I'd feel comfortable writing that number down. Okay. So tons of premium right tons of premium in this thing it's volatile it's moving it's shaking all right and then we would need to and i like to look at this as just kind of resetting the money press right the a way that i think makes your brain think through it maybe a little bit easier um when we're already in the trade and we're now adjusting and rolling kind of feels like a lot Whereas if you just looked at this and said, hey, what if I wasn't in SMCI? It'd probably feel a little bit easier to go pick out your strike prices, right? Here's the one we would look at to sell. And then if we were just building a, a brand new trade here, we'd go look at our put protection. We'd say, okay, I want to go two, three, four months out. So here we've got August. We've got July, okay? July, only about two months. So just like Preston has been in and um, like I would probably do here, I'd probably just look out to August. All right, here's our choices. So we've got the 165s. We've got the 160s, okay? We've got the 155s. So. If you think of what, the way Preston had it structured going into this week, we had a $10 spread, right? We'd sold the 135s, we owned the 125. So we kind of use that as a reference, you know, about a $10 spread here. Now there's not a 162.50 out into August. So our choices would be either that 160, the 160, um, sorry, let me, let me, back that up i need more strikes on the screen we would never go 160 that's way too tight right so we'd be looking at the 155s or maybe the 150s maybe the 145s okay i'd be that's where my eyes just naturally go i know the 160s are way too tight all right even the 155s if a stock has gone up 30 dollars and we were dealing with a $10 spread, a 750 spread, those just even feel a little too tight to me. So that would kind of get me looking at the 150s or the 145s. All right, now looking at this, the 145s, that's almost 20 bucks out of the money. So as my brain stops and looks at that, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind spending a little bit less, but to me, that feels like I'm maybe a little too far out of the money. That feels like it's really not going to help me a whole lot if SMCI turns and really starts to sell off. So I would probably come in and settle on this 150. Okay, that's probably the one I would settle on right there. 
So that's the 150 put. That's out into August. And we're paying probably about 16 bucks for that. All right. So feels a little spendy, but when you're bringing in 550 or six bucks a week, we're going to pay for that in about two or three weeks. Right. Two or three weeks, we cover the cost of that, which is a little guideline that I like to look at. Hey, can I pay for this put protection two or three weeks? Now, this isn't just going to completely go to zero, right? The $16. It's going to slowly lose some value over time as we get closer to August as far as time decay is concerned. Of course, if the stock runs up, it's going to lose some more value. But if SMCI were to just kind of hang out for a while, this 16 bucks just kind of slowly loses its value where our um, as, as far as time decay goes, and our 550 is rapidly burning. Okay, that's where we can stack this money press to make us money. So if I were to come in and just start a new trade on SMCI, this would probably be what it looks like. Okay, so if you've been in a trade on SMCI, wouldn't that just kind of be the same strikes you'd be looking to roll up to for the next week? Yeah, yeah. So we would just, that's why I call it resetting the money press because sometimes it's easier to just think about, okay, this thing's moved like crazy. If I still want to stick with it, bam. I'd just be setting up a new money press at this level. I'm just resetting the trade now at this new level. And same thing, by the way, if the trade were to drop quite a bit. We'd be looking to just reset that trade down at that new lower level. You just kind of come in and look at it as if you're starting a new trade right here. How would we build it? 